Guys, are we ready to get started? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. I love it. Okay, good morning, Sterling. Hope everybody's having a great morning so far. This morning, we have the pleasure of speaking with Lucia Santana. It sounds like she came straight out of Madrid, Spain, but we just found out that in fact, she was born in Buffalo, New York. So you can't trust anything these days, especially around the coronavirus time. Um, so Lucia, quick background about you for once. Thank you so much for taking your time to spend your morning with us. Um, Lucia is the founder of Flux Body Works. So my first question to you is, how did you get into body work in the first place? So funny, it was a very, a very long journey um, throughout my adult life. I had no interest in body work or, or the body or fitness or anything. I was going to school for film and I just needed a, I just needed a job while I was going to film school. I uh, started working at Massage Envy just at the front desk and I started realizing, oh my gosh, these therapists, they're like superhero. You see these clients and they're, they're happy. They're like in the best state of their life, like for the few minutes that they walked out of. Uh oh, one sec, I'm so sorry, one sec. Ah, okay, you're good. <laughs> I don't know where I got cut off. Did you hear me? They they walked. Yeah, they walked out being just like in the best state ever. And so I was, there's like that fire in you, like, I want to do that. I can do that. I know I can do that. And so um, I started having to sell them plans and doing this and talking to them, being able to talk to them, realizing like, why are you here? What's the problem? Um, made me just want to dive digger and actually do the hands-on part. So went to massage school, started working for other people and other businesses, realizing all of these things are not focused on the client. They're focused on uh, membership fees. They're focused on signing, signing, signing up, but like nobody gets long lasting results. Why is that the case? And so I started my own business. I think that's how a lot of businesses start. And so with Flux Body Works, we specialize on isolated muscle therapy. What that means is we focus on the problem. So forget all the symptoms because those will go away when the problem is deactivated. Um, getting to that problem, that main focus area and dis disengaging it allows the client not only to have lasting results, but we also add on light weight bearing exercises so that they start to repattern their behavior. Because a lot of it is not massage and then you're done. A lot of it is massage, take care of yourself and you're still not done. Um, it's a continuing process, it's always evolving because our bodies are always doing different things and new things if we pick up a new activity or we're sitting in a chair for too long one day. Yeah. <laughs> so we basically we have an aspiring actress turn to a muscle therapist. Yeah, I don't wanna do acting anymore. I don't know what I was yeah. thinking. Because I'm pretty sure that it's all clear by now that anything is possible. And if you listen to last week's episode with Richie as well, when we talked about reinventing yourself, you always have an opportunity to reinvent, to reinvent yourself. You just have to seek, you know, what your heart is really passionate about and follow that. So for one, you know, I applaud you for following your passion and, you know, for listening to that gut feeling. Um, I'm sure that, you know, it's, it was probably like a scary transition and you probably got some haters from it, you know, maybe like your friends, your family told you that you're crazy for like, what? You went to film school and now you're doing this? Like there's no correlation whatsoever, right? No. And I was, film school cost me $80,000. It was a very prestigious school. Um, and I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. And so everybody's like, it doesn't make sense. What are you talking about? <laughs> but I knew that I, I, that wasn't where I was headed. Um, it's, I think it's so crazy to put this pressure on, on young adults to like, this is the life that you are going to live for the rest of your life. Um, and not realizing like, they're not even the person that they're supposed to be at. I wasn't the person that I am today when I enrolled in film school. Um, and so many things, so many opportunities 
came up that led me down this path to create flux. And so just following the flow, really, I'm happy. I'm, I'm not going to look back. I don't regret anything. I'm so happy I'm in the place I am today and don't regret anything. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, live life with no regrets. Tammy agrees with you 100%. Um, Lord, yes, I can, I can hear you say that. Okay, so, you know, we're in the fitness industry and, and, and you know, we, the way that we approach fitness is a bit differently. However, you know, from what we've noticed in, in this industry is that, uh, you know, there is a strong focus with regards for exercise and training, right? Like it, even like the more committed you are, it kind of like gets to an area where it's like overdoing it. However, something that we always say is that, you know, when, when you're truly committed, you know, you can hit a, a fine line of overtraining, but the reality is, is that there's no such thing as overtraining, but rather under recovering. Do you agree with that? I, I, I do for the majority. Um, I believe that overtraining is so common and such a common cause of injury. Um, people need to realize that your body needs to rest. And even when we're sleeping, muscles are in our bodies are engaged, those muscles that have been engaged throughout the entirety of the day. So another aspect of that is everybody wants to reach that, um, that failure. And I think that's important because in that failure is when you grow. Um, but if you step past that failure point where the body is telling you, I can't go anymore, but you still try to, you're going to get hurt. So very, like you said, a very thin line between what is failure and what is injury. Sure. So, you know, obviously whoever is showing up this morning is extremely committed to their health and fitness journey, right? Um, just so that, you know, we can help the audience a little bit more. What would you say from your experience are signs of under recovery? So under recovery is you're tired, you're burnt out. Um, if you're active, living a healthy lifestyle, you should not be burnt out going into the gym. You should be pepped, even if you have to have a caffeine shot before, uh, which is really popular. I don't know. <laughs> um, there should be pep in your step. Yeah, there's days where you're like, I don't really want to go to the gym, but you're not exhausted physically. Um, and to say like, oh, I wasn't sore that day. So that doesn't mean I'm tired. That, that's not really the case. The muscles are so important, but more important is the fascia that surrounds the muscle because it's like doing, doing a squat. Our fascia is what pulls the body into the position. It's what remembers and allows the body to fall into place. The muscles is what allows you the ability to control the squat. So if the fascia, which is the leading cause of a lot of injuries because of stress to the body via everyday life or just injury in the gym or lack of recovery, the fascia gets tight. The fibers tighten. It's like if you're trying to press on your leg and you, you can't even feel the muscle because there's that, that wall. I, I don't know a better way to explain it, but if you've ever felt that, you know, there's that wall where you like, oh my gosh, that's really hard. Why is my leg so hard? That means that the fascia needs a break because it is so stressed. I don't know. I'm going, I'm going on a tangent because I have so I want to pause you for one second. Um, this is great because I definitely, I told you that I want to touch up, uh, up on fascia. So, you know, for anybody in the room who's not familiar with the term fascia, let's begin by talking about what is fascia in the first place and what is the function of fascia? So fascia is the connective tissue that connects everything in the body together. Um, ligaments, muscle, it encases the muscles. Uh, for example, think of a, a chicken breast. It's the white film on top of the chicken breast. That's what it looks like in our body. And so the thing about fascia is it, without fascia, our muscles, our ligaments, they would be rubbing together. 
there would be nothing, no lubricant, no gliding effect. So you see what happens when bones rub together. You create carpal tunnel, arthritis, all kinds of things. Now imagine if the muscles, meaty substances were rubbing together. Um, you would not be able to function or move. What's, it would be excruciatingly painful. So did, did that explain your question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so that's fascia. And basically the, the purpose of it, just to be clear, is to, to provide a lubricant for the muscles. To provide a lubricant for the muscle. Also, it really helps with stability. And I think the best way to describe it is it's the subconscious of the muscle. It contracts, it retracts before you can tell your muscle to. Um, like when we try to contract a muscle or flex a muscle, we have to um, follow through with the movement or engage it physically, like actively to have it do something. The fascia doesn't. The fascia does it on its own. That's why it's so powerful. Um, and that's why people forget that it's there. Yeah, sure. So what causes the fascia to get compromised in our day-to-day -day life? So fascia pulls, it pulls muscles. So what happens is when we're rounding the shoulder, we're pulling the fascia with that. So we're training the fascia for poor body movement. Um, same with anything. If you're doing some sort of repetitive behavior, you're training the, the fascia to follow that pattern. And if you're not doing anything to fix that, it's going to stay in that pattern. Um, that's why things like working, working out kind of breaks a cycle. You're doing something you're not necessarily doing all day, every day, or getting body work done. You're physically, manually um, releasing the fascia so that it can relax. The most common cause to injury in the fascia is that it is overused in the wrong position again and again. And stress. Stress, <laughs> stress kills everything, man. Stress will make the fascia so tight that it will affect your range of motion affect the, the way that you can move affects everything. <laughs> yeah, so from your experience, I mean, I guess it's kind of clear by now. However, I don't want to make any assumptions because you're the expert in this field. How can you tell when somebody's fascia is being compromised? Um, okay. Movement patterns? To a little bit of detail, but I'm going to really dive in. So okay. a lot of time, I deal with athletes. They tend to be very big and very bulky. So when they're on the table, you can grab the, the muscle and feel where the muscles are. You can feel between separations of the muscle. However, when there is a dysfunction in the fascia, you cannot feel what is beneath the fascia. It's like a thick blanket. Um, you can't penetrate the muscle because the, there's so much tension in the fascia. You have to remember the fascia is still tissue. So when that gets hard because of stress or because of injury, those fibers get really tight and it's trying to get through a brick wall as opposed to having somebody who does foam roll or take care of their fascia where it's a little bit looser and now you can kind of penetrate and move between the fascia. So now what are some ways that one can, can um, do in order to loosen up their fascia? So I think the best way to loosen up fascia, the easiest you can do it yourself is foam rolling. Um, mostly because you have the roller, you lay on the roller and you roll. Yes, there's a lot of different techniques and a lot of different fancy foam rollers out there, let me just tell you, foam rollers all do the same thing. <laughs> a $10 foam roller will do the same thing as a $100 foam roller. Um, it's not about the grooves and the bumps and whatever on it. You just want to apply a little bit of pressure for a little bit of time to release the muscle. You're essentially warming up the muscle. Just like when your hands are cold and you want to warm up your hands, that's going to do, it's going to have the same effect on a muscle. 
Um, there's more to this. <laughs> I forgot. So my next question to you is for any of our like high achievers in the house, um, what is the impact of not taking care of your fascia, not loosening up on your performance? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> so not taking care of your fascia. So it's like, I like it a lot of volleyball players and the lacrosse players. So when you're trying to hit that ball and your fascia is tight, you're not going to be able to reach the range that you're normally accustomed to. This is why we don't work on athletes before a big event because their body is already familiar with how their muscles are engaging, their fascia is engaging. So to restructure that would completely throw off their, their playing. Same thing goes for somebody's trying to perform very well you haven't been worked on so nothing's loose so now you're in this state where you have to work harder to hit the ball to at a certain angle or degree that you're used to hitting it at because muscles only pull that's the only thing that they do so if you if your arm is pulling in one direction because that's how, where the muscles go and your back is pulling in another direction, you have protagonist and antagonist muscles. They are fighting against each other. So what happens is the muscle group that has the most leeway, the most space, the one that's the uh, longest is how we call it in massage, will win. <laughs> so if you need your arm to win, but your back is looser, then you're not gonna get the performance that you want. Yeah. Which is why just to give, to give you guys an example, like the lat muscle is stronger than the bicep because it's longer, mm -hmm. right? Um, okay, so my next question to you is, is the fascia, I can only assume, connected to our nervous system? Yes, yes and no. Um, so the fascia, they are different systems, but the fascia overlays nerves, just like muscles do. So if there is an impingement, which means that there's muscle on top of a nerve that's not supposed to be there because of fibers that have broken up and then rehealed together, which usually happens, that's going to affect the entirety of the nervous system. Mm -hmm. um, so having connective tissue, scar tissue that's tightened, then pulls all the rest of the muscles closer together. And when that pulls, those muscles are pulling nerves with them, which is what an impingement is. And when you have an impingement, that is why you kind of, if you ever had a day where you kind of stretch your arm and you feel that your nerves are starting to like, your hands starting to twitch or you get this sharp pain. Yeah, that's because in that arm, there's some sort of impingement that a muscle is pushing on the nerve. Sure. So something that I, I once heard when I actually took a course about fascia um, is that fascia builds on lines of stress, right? So would you say that the more active a person is, the more highly they are to be exposed to injury? Yes. Okay. Definitely, yes. <laughs> um, so there's, there's two types of stress. There's mental, emotional stress, and there's stress at the gym, stress with working out. The body doesn't differentiate the two. It's all the same. It's all stress. However, why athletes are so much more prone to getting injured is because they don't take... <laughs> We all wanna get to the next level. You know, we all wanna be Arnold Schwarzenegger. So we don't listen to the stress receptors. We don't listen to our body telling us, hey, take it down a notch. So we push through that and we aggravate the muscle. We're not just putting stress on the muscle now because we can recover from the stress of the muscle by stretching, by foam rolling. It's when we aggravate the, the muscle and work past the muscle's failure point that we start to, lead to injury it's all about form it's never about reps <laughs> oh you guys heard it's all about form never about reps that's why like you know um 
in our training, what we really like make sure to practice is that form is being fixed before we progress to like higher reps, higher weights, that sort of thing. Because otherwise you're just adding more, I mean, you're increasing the chances of injury. So now, okay, this, this might sound like a loaded question. <laughs> um, and and I'm, I'm asking you this question because I want to pick up your brain a little bit because I know that you're ready for it. So considering everything that we talked about, right? Um, now, let's say if somebody is a high performer, they're under-recovered, it's probably because in their head they're thinking i have to train more i have to train harder like go 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 mentality right however um unless they're athletes and you know their their paychecks or their livelihood depends on it chances are especially if if they're in our community that it's because they're just so obsessed and when i use the word obsessed know that there is a positive connotation to it i think you need to be obsessed in order to achieve great results but it's because they're so obsessed with body composition and weight loss okay now what is the correlation or has have there be, been studies with regards to the correlation of you know compromised fascia and weight gain Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so compromised fascia and weight gain. So what happens when with fascia, fascia allows us to kind of go back. It's the elasticity in our body. Um, so if we're gaining weight rapidly at a pace that's not healthy, which most weight gain is, it kind of happens. Um, then the fascia will, is going to have to essentially restructure itself super fast. And just like any healing, when something is, is healing rapidly, it's not healing correctly. Um, I know our bodies are these awesome machines, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, when, it has, when the body has to do something super fast because this is what we're giving it, this is what we're giving it, we it has to compensate and it has to do the best that it can and the fascia will still be there but there will definitely still be um dysfunctions in that specifically uh tighter connective tissue one one area that was healed faster than than another area and what that does is that one spot is now a very big um pain point a very big target for injury Oh, I love it, man. This is so powerful. And I can only assume based off of my train of thought that the answer was going to be yes, which is why I wanted to pick up your brain, but you're the expert. Um, so, you know, for the audience, this is something that's super important to acknowledge. A lot of times we, when we go to the gym, we want to lift more, we want to lift heavier, um, especially because we want to feel a certain way, we want to look a certain way. However, it's really, that's why we always say that it's really important to focus on consistency first and foremost. And that is consistency with regards to your movement, consistency with regards to your training, and consistency with regards to your regeneration. So like foam rolling, stretching, that will be under the umbrella of regeneration. Do you agree? Yes. Right, so like, you know, when somebody's super about, you know, their weight loss journey, or they just, they just wanna see fast results, so like they, they're being more, they're going more, they're doing more. Um, However, remember that because your body is an incredible machine, if you're creating extreme changes in your body, your body won't be able to keep up. And the reason why I want to bring up this point is because, you know, we live in a society where there is a lot of um, schemes in order to help you stay motivated that which makes you believe a certain thing like for example with weight loss like you lost a bunch of weight too and i want to talk about that in just a second but like you know for anybody who's committed to their weight loss journey because it is an emotional stress on your brain 
once you're in, you're in, and you're ready for like the hundred pounds that you gained over the last few years to be gone by next week because it's uncomfortable. However, if you're trying to use an approach that's going to deplete your body and that's going to create a fast change, then your body is going to bounce back because it wasn't able to heal and recover. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. um, can you share with us a little bit, um, you know, your weight loss journey and like, where were you before? Like, what got you to commit is, you know, is flux body works and what you do, does that have anything to do with your weight loss journey? <laughs> yeah. So when I, um, four years ago, I, I started gaining weight. I had my first child. I, what? Yeah. <laughs> I have two little ones. Um, but I had my first child and the weight was, I didn't notice it. It's like, I know it's so silly, but you just don't notice that it's on you when you're living it. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't notice it until year two, year three. And then I hit year four and I'm like, I looked in the mirror one day and I was like, I can't keep doing this. Something's got to change. Like, I'm scared that I'm at the point where I can't go back. Like, how do I fix this? And that got me stuck for so long, not knowing where to start. Um, but the, like I said, my mother was obese for the majority of my life, um, all of my life, the majority of her life. And yes. I saw how that affected how she in, like played with me as a child and, and did certain things. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to repeat the story. I didn't want to repeat the history with my children. So she passed away a few years ago. And when all this was happening in my head and I'm like, okay, this is it. This is me saying that I don't care what I have to do. I'm committed. And I think that was the biggest shift. It was the mind because the body will push through and we can beat it up and it's going to bounce back for the most part. Um, but the mind will break at the drop of a hat. So the fact that I had to get into the mindset and it took me so long, like you guys have like Sari and Aaron here. I think like with the hustle that they have, they can fuel you and get you past that. For me, I didn't have anybody and I didn't have this development team and community that I have now. So I was doing it alone and it was hard because the first thing you do when you want to lose weight, fad diet, fad diet, fad diet. And that's what I did. And I'm like the potato diet. That sounds awesome. The cabbage soup diet. <laughs> like craziness. And yeah, I'm not saying that you're not going to lose a pound or two, of course, but it's the dumbest way to lose a pound or two, because when you start eating again, you're going to gain the three pounds. And so that was another shift. There was so many shifts within the journey, like realizing, okay, you did it the easy way that didn't work. Now let's do it the serious way. And when I stopped eating junk food, when I stopped, um, <laughs> drinking soda like when i stopped all of the silly first thing like first steps i should have taken when i started taking the first step second round then i really started to see a difference and i know like everybody thinks they have to hit the gym first but it's so important to take care of what you're putting in your body because you can always out eat and exercise any any day like three pizzas okay i let me work out for an hour you know so unless you're at like a level that where you are a high performer and you need to consume this crazy amount of food, like focus on what you're putting into your body, because not only do we need to fuel ourselves, we also need to make sure that we're eating enough because that was my problem. After I had decided I was going to lose weight and I started losing weight, I lost 70 pounds after I was like, so scared of gaining the weight back. I started, okay, I lost it. I'm going to, watch what I eat now. Like, did you not learn anything? You know, once again, repeating a pattern because I wasn't fully like in the mind where I, I didn't learn. I didn't learn. And so I started like cutting out more than I should have for my body because I was so scared of, I spent all this time losing the weight. Now I don't want to gain it. And now I'm at a new journey where I'm trying to get the fittest I've ever been in my life. And that means bringing in a whole bunch of food 
that um, I'm not used to eating like um, different types of protein as well as just the amount of food I have to eat for what I'm putting out there and how much I'm exercising. So all of the journeys, we can all do it, especially together when you have some sort of accountability and partnership. And because there's going to be days that are hard. There are days that were so hard for me and I got through it. And I feel like I know everybody says this, but if I can get through it, literally anybody can get through it because I was so lazy. <laughs> yeah. Do you, so this is just a personal question and I'm totally like, you know, um, getting off road a little bit, but do you think, you know, if back in the day when you were like 70 pounds heavier, if you would have had like a mentor or a community to follow, do you think you would have been able to get to where you're at now or maybe even farther than that at a faster pace? Oh my gosh, three times faster. The yeah. amount of like silly things that if I had a mentor to go to, they would have told me right away, that's, that's dumb, why are you doing that? Um, oh my gosh, <laughs> if I could go back, the mentor is the first thing I would get. Yeah for sure okay yeah because i mean that was the same in my own journey however back then i didn't know of any so i kept on repeating the the same behavior over and over again um okay i want to read some comments with regards to what you just shared about your journey nikki said absolutely unless you have kids it's hard to comprehend how it just happens it sneaks up on you and then it just hits you yeah like to all of us, like life just happens unless, um, and th that again, that incorporates a lot of, you know, mindset training to, to be fully intentional with everything. And I think that that's, that takes a lot of training through time to be able to be aware of every aspect of your life and where you're at. But I think that's why, especially with women, like, you know, especially with, with the group that we work with, you know, women who have more weight to lose, like life happened to them. And it's usually like their careers. It's usually, you know, their partnership that they're in, or it's usually their family status that they're in. And they're like, man, like I used to be so in shape and all of a sudden this happened. And like, they don't even realize, um, Tammy says fad diets work until you start eating again sustainability sustainability amen tammy marnie nutrition is crucial first then exercise amen marnie jeanette you can't out train a bad diet and man like marnie jeanette tammy like you all are like and nikki as well like you you are all like extreme badasses and like you freaking get it like and that's why i wanted to bring up this topic just a little bit because i know it's been a a part of who you are as a person. And I'm sure that the way that you carry yourself within your business, like your confidence level must, must be like completely different because you can't show up the way that you want to lead, you know, your students, your athletes, the same way when you're in a place where deep down you just want to hide. Right. Yeah. Confidence is so much different. Like I, I can't believe how different of a person I am. And, you know, it started with, it started with the weight, the weight was the problem for me. Um, but losing that just gave me so much more. I realized like I was this strong, fierce warrior. Like I could do so much more than I ever thought I could do. And I could do that feeling to the best that I could, like with the best health, with the best image of myself and, like it just started with this little thing, this little decision for me to like lose a few pounds. I, I think such a big outcome and a big um, result for a little goal, you know? Yeah, for sure. Thank you for sharing that about yourself. Um, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to um, our, <laughs> our, our main route. So we talked about, you know, the correlation between fascia and body composition. I wanna jump and talk a little bit about you know, the correlation between making sure that you have a healthy fascia, taking care of your fascia and an overall lifespan. I mean, I'm sure that there is a correlation with regards for that as well. If you don't mind touching up on it, that would be great. The lifespan, like living longer? Yeah. 
has have there been any studies that suggest that when somebody has like healthier fascia and they're you know better recovered they're able to live longer and if so why so i have seen a few studies out there where they're saying that fascia does <laughs> does ensure longevity um and my take on that is because healthy fascia heals better you're less susceptible to a small injury becoming a big deal like a cut for somebody who has healthy fascia and other il ailments stemming from that a cut could be a life altering changing obstacle but um for a healthy person no because your body will do what it's supposed to it'll create that scar tissue to come and form and essentially heal it put the scab on it and you're good so when you have unhealthy fascia the only thing i can really think of that really hinders it is the stress that you're placing on yourself and we all know that stress can lead to things like heart attacks and things like strokes and all of these other crazy like depression and all of that i know it's silly but all of those things still have to deal with the fascia being stressed does that make sense yeah 100 percent. and i i would hope that that would have been your answer however <laughs> i wasn't sure um but you know you guys so obviously fascia is super important it says that my internet connection is unstable so sorry if i sound like i'm going into the twilight zone that is not my intention um okay so i bet that by now everybody who is in the room is convinced okay then fascia is obviously super important um maybe half of you guys didn't even know what what fascia meant until like 30 minutes ago and now you're probably like mind blown and that's why you know i wanted to bring the, the lovely lucia and and thank you for being here once again but what are the steps that somebody can take in order to you know improve their fascia health so Is first and foremost yeah. i would say warm up warm up by foam rolling warm up by dynamic stretching um not just like pilates stretching here people <laughs> we're, we're using dynamic stretch because that's allowing us to provide movement in our stretch we're rotating we're moving forward backwards side to side we're essentially performing the action before we actually engage in the action that is going to train the fascia warm up the fascia to be ready for when you're actually putting weight on it um so the stress is definitely going to be lowered and like i said foam rolling make sure you're taking care of yourself before and after your workout before so that you're not going in there unwarmed up or that your muscles are not prepared to take any sort of weight or um what is it called resistance and after so that if for some reason you're breaking down muscle all the time when you're working out so you're also splitting fibers and those fibers are reattaching so what better way to make sure that they reattach nicely than foam rolling after your workout just to make sure that there aren't any adhesions that have already formed yep I, I want to share with you guys a, a little story. So, you know, um, a few years ago when I was still kind of like relatively new to my second phase of, of my, my fitness journey after years of struggles with weight loss, after I actually achieved that, I started training in a, you know, in a functional way um, using compound movements at a high intensity that sort of thing some people may want to call it crossfit um and within my first year i i blew my shoulders up and that is because i have that same mentality and the reason why i'm asking all these questions is because again had i known what i know now with regards for fascia like i wouldn't have you know had a shoulder impingement multiple times. I, I honestly don't know to what severity my shoulder injury um, has led to, but that, that was because I was all in, going to train as hard as I can, but like not taking care of, you know, like the, the sheet 
and you know the the mesh that's really encompassing the muscle and you know my muscles hated me and because of that i had to actually take a couple months away from from doing the training that i love i'm grateful that i knew how to eat right and of course because of that i was still bulletproof with regards to how i look and felt however for anybody you know who cares about their fitness and their long term success with regards to their fitness journey like that is something that's so important to take care of because you you think that you're invincible i thought i was invincible i was like i got six pack abs like nothing's gonna beat me like shoulders out like i could i could i couldn't even i and i tell this to everybody i'm like i couldn't even drive and when i drove like i had to do this with my shoulder um i, I couldn't even like get a like literally like a mug from the cupboard like reaching beyond like a 30 degree angle would just crush me like for up to six months so that's when it really hit home so for anybody who was like man like i'm all about training like it makes me feel good like you know get it in like i feel you dude like i've been there too however like you have to look at it from a very like holistic 360 perspective like how do i take care of the things that are going to take care of my longevity because if you don't have that like we all think we're invincible just like when i used to go tanning all the time when i was young my grandma was like straight i used to be just like you, you're gonna start getting wrinkles i'm 30 years old like you can already like see wrinkles right here however i live my life in a very healthy way so I, I mean, I think I'm, I'm pretty okay with slowing down degeneration. However, nobody's invincible and we all think that we are. And it doesn't matter like how strong you look, like, you know, we're all made of the same material. So please, please, please. Um, if this, you know, episode did not bring you enough, man, I'm going to the twilight zone. If this episode did not bring you enough clarity with regards to the importance of just taking care of, of you know, like your tissue um, in a holistic way, then I hope that this helped. So, okay, let's say somebody's like, man, like they spoke some massive truth, like Sarit's journey, like I can totally relate with it, right? Like what what do you recommend is the first step that they start doing that is not too overwhelming um that will lead to a sustainable um you know healed um and recovery lifestyle so the first step um i would suggest if you're at home by yourself um self-massage which that means we want to just move the fascia. The fascia is all around us. Just self-massage your whole body right before you wake up. Because now you're not only stimu stimulating the lymphatic system, um, but you're moving the fascia. That's what we want. We don't want it to be stuck in its place because that's when it like cements up and turns really hard. When you're not active, I mean, I feel like I'm talking to a lot of active people on here, so I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. but if you're not active, that's when you have more problems. That's when the, com uh, the problems are more common. However, sometimes we run into this problem where like, oh, it hurts to be active, but it's not going to stop hurting until you are active. So I know it's like that, that pull, but it's really important, um, especially now that we're all at home, um, most of us, if you are not moving as much as you have been or you should be, get up and start moving start massaging yourself, just moving the fascia, the skin, use your fingertips, kind of glide over. I think that is the first, first step that everybody can do for themselves at home. Start with the foam roller and stretch. Awesome. I love it. Okay. Well, you are full of generosity, which I love. Um, so I don't know if you guys saw the post that I made, but Lucia, um, was so kind to to share some generosity and she will be giving away to one of you guys an hour consultation where she can give you like real personalized like one-on-one -on -one approach with regards to how you can take uh, better care of just your overall longevity um, and make sure that you are fully recovered so that you can be more do more 
um, train more, that sort of thing. So I'm going to switch this into gallery view. And right now we have um, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, but, 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 but Lucy and I are. So we have 15 people in the room. I'm like counting one by one instead of just looking at the bottom number. Um, so if you can pick a number, um, one through 15. 14. Sarah Novick. Nice. Awesome, Sarah, I'm so glad you got it because I know that you train all the freaking time. Um, so Sarah, I will connect you with Lucia or one more question, Sarah, I'll connect you with Lucia. So Lucia, if somebody wants, you know, to ask you more questions or get a hold of you, where can they find you? They can find me right on my Facebook page on, uh, Flux Body Works, as well as Instagram Flux Body Works, F-L-U-X everywhere, LinkedIn. TikTok, whatever. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Amazing. Um, Sarah, I will connect you with Lucia so that you guys can, you know, configure your gift. Lucia, thank you so much for your time, for your generosity. You guys, how did you like it? Give me a thumbs up. Love it. Hold. Come on, turn on your cameras. <laughs> Kayla, I love your, your thumbs up dance. Amazing. There we go. There we go. Amazing. Woo! All the, all the greatness. Lu Lucia, thank you so much for your time. Just so you know, this was recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube. If you guys want to re-listen to this as well, or you, th you thought about a person who was like, you know what, like I always see them at the gym, but like they never stretch. They, they just go from zero to a hundred. Like, you know, have them go um, to our YouTube page, Aaron and Sarit, so that they can check it out. Um, feel free to share it with everybody. Lucia, once again, thank you so much for your time today. You guys, thank you so much for your time today as well. Um, tomorrow we have another guest interview. We're going to take a completely different route, um, and we're going to be talking about gratitude. Tomorrow's interview is going to be at 6 a.m., Lucia, I will chat with you in a little bit. I'll connect you with Sarah. You guys, thank you for your time today. I hope you have a beautiful, happy Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow, 6 a.m.